first of all, let's let's uh, talk about one of the thing. Let's talk about one real quick thing about why we're doing eVPN. So our traditional data center network. Let me pick the right color here. Looked probably something like this. You know, for most people. Traditional, I assume what you're drawing here is some kind of a aggregation and core layer, access layer, that sort of a diagram? Exactly. Or are we going leaf spine? Uh, okay. No, we're, we're, this, is, this is old school. This has been the data center since about 2008, uh, 2006 or so. Sure. And, and uh, so our default gateways are going to be here. So we're going to run some sort of first ho first hop redundancy protocol like VRRP or HSRP. One will be active, the other will be standby. If we have multiple VLANs, we can as SVIs, we can stagger active and standby across them. But the important thing is, is that um, our layer three boundary is up here. Let me just use, use the different colors, easier to see on the screen. So our layer three boundary is here, and then everything below this is purely layer two forty. Got it. And we and we do that because we need that for vMotion. So if I have a virtual machine here, and it's sitting inside of a hypervisor, typically ESXi, but there's other hypervisors that support this type of technology. And I'm gonna do a little trick here. So I've got a VM living on a uh, on a hypervisor, talking to a, a set of access layer switches. And that is all layer two again because it's there's a good chance we're going to need to do vMotion between right. two hypervisors because reasons. There's a variety of reasons we yeah. might need to do that. Yeah, yeah. As network engineers uh, and architects and technicians, we don't you know we may not like this because we would prefer just to do a simple layer three leaf spine, but that's not up to us. We have to support the applications that uh, we're asked to support and we're asked to support vMotion. One quick side note, there is a misconception that VMware has moved, removed this layer two adjacency requirement. That is not the case. What they did uh, about six years ago with uh, vSphere 6.0 is they removed the requirement but that the VM kernel interfaces. So each of these hypervisors is going to have uh, an IP interface called a VM kernel interface. And those IP addresses used to have to be on the same subnet. Yes. And that's where, the, that's where the actual data would go back and forth for that actual vMotion. So that, that, that is no longer needs to be layer two adjacent. But we still have to have the same layer two segments available on all hypervisors yeah. to support that vMotion. So yeah, we can pick up the VM and move it across a layer three boundary. But when the VM gets to where it's going, it's still got to have that same layer two that it had wherever it was coming from. Well, in this case, we're, we're, that's, we're not even doing that. We're just, the same VLANs are spanned across all of these ports. We're not doing any, any layer three boundaries at this point. There is no layer three right. boundary in this right, right, setup right, right. right sure, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we're talking about the data networks because if you think about it, what's happening is that data is coming in from the internet or wherever and it's hitting the VM. And then when we do that vMotion, we need that data to follow. So uh, the default gateway needs to be able to get, or the, the router that's servicing that subnet needs right. to be able to get to that VM. So it has to be the same layer two network. So what we do is we just uh, enable the v, that VLAN on all of our access switches. We trunk them down to all of our hypervisors and that provides that layer two adjacency. So that's what we're talking about there. <laughs> With the downside of having that same layer two domain spread out across a bunch of switches, but. Right. Yeah. Right, um, which is which is a you know it's something we had to you know something when VMware when vMotion came on the scene when VMware came on the scene, it was actually in two thousand six when AMD and Intel started including the hypervisor extensions in their processors. It was I mean you probably remember this it was it was almost overnight that every workload or just about every workload moved from uh, virtual machines over to physical machines. Yeah, so. Um, what we want to do, what we would like to do, is move towards this more elegant leaf spine topology, which gives us a number of benefits. Uh, one of the benefits is that we can get away from chassis. 
in uh, a traditional environment, we if we were doing this layer two, these VLANs spanned everywhere, or not spanned, but these VLANs available everywhere, these two were limited to just uh, two. And because we have two, if we lose one, we have no more redundancy, we've lost 50% of our capacity. So it makes sense to make them chassis, so they got redundant fabric modules, line cards, <laughs> supervisor modules, power supplies, all that good stuff. Highly redundant platform. And they're cheap. If we, oh, no, they're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not cheap. So if we can go to Leaf Spine, we can go with more traditional top of rack, end of row style uh, devices um, that maybe have 32 or 64 100 gig interfaces or now, uh, or now 400 gig interfaces. And we don't have to buy the big chassis. And if we need more, if we need more connectivity to our leaves, we just buy more. So I don't want to go into, uh, spend too much time into talking about why we're go doing EVPN, but EVPN allows us to stretch a layer two segment across all of our leafs so that we can support the ever important, oops, the ever important vMotion. Even though I mean, that's, the, that's, on your the right side of the diagram there, even though all those connections between the leaf layer and the spine layer is layer three. Right, it's pure layer three leaf to spine. Nothing's blocking. There's a routing protocol handling link failures and availability and yeah. ca calculating ECMP and route paths and all that stuff is ha handled. Um, but we still, we can have our cake and eat it too, so to speak, and we can V motion anywhere around on any leaf. Also, the default gateway is on the leaves, so that makes some traffic patterns better. Because you can move okay. the gateway near where your VM is, so you have mm -hmm. less of this um, tromboning yeah. or uh, you know hairpinning yeah. that you might need to do. Yeah, yeah. So are we use AnyCast gateways, um, and, and that's for all the vendors. So the same uh, default gateway will, will be on any leaf, um, and there's stuff in the back end to prevent the the I am Spartacus problem that we normally would have if the same device has the same IP address on different segments. So we don't have to worry about that. So that's uh, an over. That's um, kind of an overall thing about EVP and why we're doing EVP. So hmm. there have been other attempts to do something like this. Um, there is uh, there there is Fabric Path. You and I were um, saw a presentation by Brocade on on um, VCS, which is Trill based, and some other stuff. But EVPN one. <laughs> For the most part. Uh, de decidedly, uh, I know there's some still some trill out there. There's still some shortest path bridging out there that different folks have implemented at large scale for different reasons, so they don't just walk away from it. But but right, EVPN one. This is the way it's really done these yeah. days. Yeah. Um, the only other one that's very common in data centers is Cisco ACI, and there's a lot of similarities between EVPN and, and ACI, uh, but there's also some differences. Uh, we're not going to go into those, but um, from a topology standpoint, they're, they're the same. It's a layer three network. It's yep. VXLAN based. Uh, there's a routing protocol underneath of it, and uh, we won't go into those differences. Yeah, and, and just fair to point out that EVPN is an industry standard, whereas Cisco ACI is a yes. product that's unique to Cisco, Cisco proprietary. Yeah. And as we talked, you know, that may not be such of a big deal because uh, it, we're not building multi-vendor EVPN deployments, which we talked about in that podcast. Exactly. We're not typically uh, doing that. You're probably just investing in one vendor for the fabric anyway, but still worth pointing out to those folks yeah. that maybe aren't overly familiar with yeah. either ACI or EVPN. Yeah. And the big benefit for EVPN, at least in this, re in this regard, is that it's the same, the concepts are the same across all vendors. Um, and even if you understand EVPN, a lot of the concepts will translate into ACI as well. So if you understand EVPN, understanding ACI will be a little bit easier as well.